The matter of authentication has always been a very difficult thing for developers to deal with. We've seen all too recently how data breaches could affect users. And if that happens to you, that could be really bad, especially if a user isn't really abiding by best password practices. So it all comes down to storing passwords securely or just bypassing passwords completely, in which case you need to implement all this other logic to deal with that and it can start piling up very quickly. This is where authentication frameworks come in really handy. These authentication providers have already solved all these problems for you, including how best to secure passwords, but also come out of implementations for passwordless and social media logins as well. And SuperTokens is the open source solution to these problems that has some very novel ways of dealing with things. Typically, authentication providers only connect to the front end of your application, meaning that when your front end receives a request, it then has to send it to your back end and then it has to send it to a separate IDP app and then that IDP app has to send that to a different back end and all of them have to communicate and eventually you'll get the response back. It does work, but it's very convoluted and there are simpler ways of doing things. Super Tokens integrates into your back end and front end, meaning you don't need this separate application and everything can just communicate directly. This makes things an awful lot simpler, especially when you are just developing an API. Super Tokens offers both self-hosting and managed hosting solutions. If you go with managed hosting, you get the first 5,000 monthly active users for free. And if you go with self-hosting, because it's open source, you can do that, you get an unlimited number of monthly active users for free. If you're curious about more exact with the pricing, you can check the pricing calculator. I'll leave it in the description below. And that gives you a very fine grained estimate based on your monthly active user expectations, as well as whatever add-ons you want to apply to it as well. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to integrate Super Tokens into your fast API application using the Super Tokens Python SDK. With all that out of the way, let's find out how we can integrate authentication into our fast API application in less than 30 minutes. In this video, we're going to be largely focusing on the back end side of things, but I do want to show you one or two bits from the front end just to provide a little bit of context. So we have this front end application that's already built out, and this is based on the Super Tokens example uh, that they provide. And this makes use of the Super Tokens pre built UI for authentication, which is really nice for something like this because it means I can get to show it off easier. But it's also great for those uh, just creating APIs that don't want to deal with front ends all that much and just want some sort of authentication screen that people can use and they can just use the pre-built one. So if you head into this, into source views and an auth view, this is where everything happens. So when we load the page, we load this init super tokens UI. This is defined in config.ts in this example. And this calls super tokens UI init, um, which is what actually initializes the, the UI. And then we have all these options that I'm not going to go over in too much detail because a lot of this is the same as what you would define on the back end. But I did want to show this off uh, because if you want to add or remove a recipe, then you'll need to do it on the front end and the back end. I just wanted to talk about that as context, uh, but we'll talk about recipes especially more uh, once we talk about the back end side of things. On the back end side of things, I have kind of a, a demo project already here. So I have the init.py, which is just empty, and then have a git ignore, and then a requirements.txt, which talks about our requirements. So we're using Fast API as the backend today. Uh, Super Token supports Flask, Fast API, and Django. It only supports those three. It doesn't support any others at the moment. Um, if you're not sure how Fast API works, you can look at the video that I made on that uh, a little while ago to get you up to speed. We also have Uvicorn, which will just run the web server for us when we're done. And then we have Super Tokens Python, which is the main SDK library to connect to everything Super Tokens. We're going to be spending most of this video in two files. So the first will be app.py, and this will be our main definition of our application. There are a lot of imports to do, so I'm going to be going back and forth to the top of the file a lot. Uh, but we'll start with from Super Tokens Python, import input app con sorry, input app info, and then super tokens config. I almost got the two confused there. Uh, we're going to define super tokens config equals uh, super tokens config and then the connection URI is the the URI to your super tokens core instance. Um, so for the sake of demoing, I'm using HTTPS uh, slash, slash try.supertokens.com. Once you actually host it, uh, either by self-hosting or managed hosting, you'll put the URI in that field instead. But for now, we're just using the demo one to show it off. And then we're going to define app info, which is largely just some metadata stuff. So we have app name 
which would be super tokens tutorial like that of API domain, uh, which is the link to our back end. So in that case, it's going to be localhost port 3001, not dot capitalized. And then we have a website domain, which is the link to our front end, which is going to be localhost 3000. And that's what we're going to be running things on. We then also need to import init here and do init down here. And what this will do is it will initialize super tokens. So it will create an instance um, of the main class in the back end. And it will also set that as a singleton um, by attaching the instance to the class. So there's only one possible instance you can have. And we have super tokens config equals super tokens config. We have app info equals app info. We then have framework, which is fast API. We have recipe list, which I'm just going to leave as an empty list for now. We'll come back to, and we have mode equals ASGI uh, because fast API is an asynchronous web framework. You then need to define the fast API app itself. So we're going to do that fast API, and then we're going to import that in a second. Um, equals super tokens tutorial like that. And we're going to do fast API dot add middleware. Uh, get middleware, which is something we need to import as well. Uh, so the fast API I do from fast API import fast API like that. And then the get middleware, you import it from super tokens is um, framework helpers. So there are others for different things. And I also need to change this to be fast API with API in all capitals because uh, I messed that up. And then we need to, well, I actually need to import some more. We need to import what's it, course middleware and get all course headers. Okay. So we need to set up all the course stuff from starlet.middleware.course. For those that don't know, Fast API is built on top of Starlet. So we don't need to import or install Starlet separately. Import course middleware. And then we do from uh, super tokens Python import get all course headers. And then we come down here and we set up our actual app, which is cause middleware. And then I'm actually going to copy paste the rest of it because it's a lot of typing uh, otherwise. Uh, so we set the app to be our fast API application. We allow origins of domain. If there is a website domain, this can be none. I don't see when this would ever need to be none, but it can be none. So I, I just did this to get rid of type errors. You know, allow credentials, allow methods, and allow headers. And for that, we combine the content type header with get all course headers, which is something that Super Tokens provides. And then while we're here, we can turn this into a script by using if name equals main. And then we can import uvicorn and have it so when we run this file, we run uh, the application. And then we run it on host uh, 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0 .0. And we run it on port 3001. And that pretty much does it for this app.py. We will come back to it when we come back to this recipe list, but we're going to be creating a second file for that called recipes. And that's because this file can get quite long, especially if you use uh, social media authentication. So there's a bit of a background to recipes. Super tokens uses them to enable and disable certain authentication abilities. All you need to do to enable and disable recipes is just include or exclude uh, certain functions from the list. Um, everything is pre-built for you, which is really nice. So we're going to do recipe list equals a list. And we're going to do session dot in it and we need to import that, but we'll do that in a bit. And then we're going to start with just email password dot in it. I'm going to show you these kind of one by one. Uh, and to do this, we need to do from super tokens python dot recipe import session and then email password. And that's all we need to do for these. We then come to back to the app.py and we do from backend dot recipes import recipe list. And then we pass the recipe list down here. And now we're ready to go. So I'm going to run if I run the front end. Like what is going on there? Okay. Uh, we do npm. I think it's npm run Dev, I want to say, yeah, to do the front end. And then we can just move that over, uh, do the back end. 
uh, open the virtual environment. I think I already have everything installed, but I will just double check. I do. So then we need to do pi dash m. Oh, actually, I need to come back out and then do pi dash m backend dot app. And that'll run our backend. If I just move this one over slightly so I can get to this URL and click it, we then have this page that comes up. Um, and I need to hit sign out. I was already signed in on this when I was testing it. Um, so our home page looks a little bit like this. It's just a very demo page. Then we hit sign in. And then we have, oh yeah, because, and this is what I was saying about before, we need to disable certain things in the front end. And I completely forgot to do it. So we need to disable all of this, I think. Yeah, we disable all of that and it reloads. And then we just have our email password. So we can sign up using an account. So if I do say, if I just use my business uh, email account for all these, uh, and then we have a super secure password that is not just Cobra one. <laughs> and then we're signed up and then we're signed in. We have this user ID. We can then sign out and then we can sign in again. And if we do that again uh, with our super secure passwords, uh, did I type that incorrectly? Okay, so it turns out I put in the wrong password when I created the account, which is awesome. So I've now signed into my secret troll account and now we have the correct password we sign in and we're signing just fine with our user ID. So that all works just as we would expect. So the next one I'm gonna show you is passwordless. So we're gonna disable the email password and enable passwordless. Of course you can have them all enabled at the same time. I just wanna show them off uh, one by one and then show them all off at the end together. So we need to change it in the front end and then we need to go into the back end and then uh, do it here, passwordless.init like that. And the passwordless one actually needs a bit of configuration. So we can import from uh, super tokens, Python dot recipe dot passwordless import uh, contact email or phone config or any of the others, if you would prefer. And then we can set flow type equals uh, user input code, or there was another one here. I think it was like magic link or something. Uh, user, it's not even giving me any IntelliSense anymore. Uh, <laughs> there are three options. Uh, one is magic link, one is user input code, and one is both. Um, and then we have contact config equals contact email or phone config, and that is default. And now that should run. So if we, I think, I don't know if I need to reset everything actually. I don't think I do. So if I go sign in, there we go. We have this email. So if we put in Cobra Business one here and continue. Okay, I just forgotten to restart the back end. That's fine. Uh, but we now have this OTP that is sent to carbo.business at gmail.com. And I'm gonna try and do this without exposing anyone. And that's gone into my inbox here. So we now have this OTP. I can copy and paste that into our application. Hit continue. And then we are logged in. So the fact that I created the password didn't matter because we also had passwordless authentication too. So the third one I wanna show off in this video is using social media integrations or as super tokens call them third parties to sign in. So I've just uncommented this and we have this in it. And in the back end, this is the one that starts getting quite long. So I've actually just put it all in. We have all these uh, third party providers that we need to import. And if we just look at one of these for now, so we have this third party dot in it, sign in and up feature, we have sign in and up, and then we have a series of providers. And these providers are like Google, GitHub, and you have your provider input and then the config. And then this client ID and client secret here are client IDs and secrets that Super Tokens provides freely to everyone to use. So these are just in the documentation. You can just use these. These also show up in the examples too. Uh, so they have example clients for Google, GitHub, Apple, and Twitter. However, they do also, if I go to the documentation, the full list of third parties that they support is down this side here. So Google, Google Workspaces, Apple, Discord, Facebook, GitHub, GitLab, Twitter, LinkedIn, Okta, SAML, and Active Directory. You can also create your own custom uh, providers as well. Um, it's just that we're using the only ones that Super Tokens has uh, clients for. So it doesn't actually have a public clients for these. You can also choose whether to have them as single tenant or multi-tenant. I'm not gonna be talking about that in this video, but you can set up a different third party uh, authentication requirements for every organization if you want to. 
So if you had like something that was to scale and that multiple companies were gonna be using and you wanted to provide a little bit more customizability, you could do that. We're not doing that here. Uh, and then if we reload everything, so if I, I don't actually need to reload the front end, but I do need to reload the back end. And then we sign out and then we sign in again. We have this continue with GitHub, Google, Apple, and X. So if I just hit Google and then sign into my business account using my Google, continue. I am in. And you can see we have a user ID and everything works. So if I were to uncomment everything, so we now have email, password, passwordless, and third party enabled, and in the back end as well, we have everything enabled in here. We see that the UI then changes to adapt to this. So we have all our social logins up here, and then we have this um, email, password, and passless would, passwordless hybrid down here. So if I were to put my email address in here, uh, we then have an option to use a password or we can continue with passwordless. And then of course, if we wanted to create an account, we can hit sign up and then everything uh, changes to match our settings. Once you have everything set up and you can log into your different accounts, actually checking that the user is authenticated is very easy. You just need to import the depends from fast API. You need to import your session container from supertokens.recipe.session and then from session.framework.fastapi, you import verify session. And this is the main thing that actually checks if you're authenticated. And I've built an endpoint down here um, that checks all this. So it's slash session info. So we have our session container, which depends on verify session. And this verify session will check the super tokens core to make sure that the user is authenticated or make sure that there is a user authenticated. And then the session container is just what S returns to. And then here we're just printing some information. So we have the session handle, we have the user ID, and then you have your access token payload as well. Um, so if we reload the back end once again, and then we head over to localhost port 3001 slash no, session info. I think it's not in <laughs> session info. There we go. Uh, we have uh, a message unauthorized because we're not actually logged in. If I were to go back to our localhost 3000 very quickly, um, like that, and if we signed in, that is now ridiculously large. <laughs> So now I'm signed in again. I went through the Google flow this time. We come back here and we reload. We get um, our session handle, our user ID, which is the same user ID we saw before. And then we have our access token, which takes the form, looks like of a JWT. And that is a rundown of how you can get super tokens working for your API. Once you've got it set up, all you need is that verify session function and you're good to go. It really is so simple to get it up and running. So whether you just need a really quick and dirty solution for a personal or lightly used API, or even if you need more enterprise-like support, SuperTokens does have all those features too. Of course, if you liked the video, then make sure to leave a like to let me know, and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.